Poverty is urbanizing rapidly in much of the developing world, more so in some places than others. Uh, what do I mean by the urbanization of poverty? I mean that the share of the poor living in urban areas is rising relative to rural areas. For example, in India, uh, in 1950, about 12% of the poor lived in urban areas. Today, it's more like a third. Should we worry about the urbanization of poverty? Um, my answer generally is we probably worry too much about it. In, in much of the developing world, it's a positive force. In some of the developing world, it's not so benign. There are some countries where the urbanization process is not being associated with growth and poverty reduction. The poor face restrictions on their opportunities in, in urban areas, and their lives in rural areas are not helped by low agricultural yields, lack of investment, and lack of access to things like land. So what should urban governments do about uh, the urbanization of poverty? Well, one thing, important thing, is, is not be too worried about it in most places. What urban governments can do, they face a, a, a tension between the interests of their own constituencies, which often are not supportive to rural populations moving in, urban slums that are created, more expensive service provision. But those things can be crucial for poverty reduction nationally and also for economic growth nationally. You can easily see a situation where poverty rises in urban areas but falls nationally. We've learned a lot about the performance of, of cash and in-kind transfer payments both in urban and rural areas and a number of policies have proved quite effective. People have become very um, uh, fond of conditional cash transfers. I'm not sure that the conditions are always necessary. Sometimes they're more political than um, anything. But um, in other words, the, the donors like to give conditions on transfers. But I think we've also become much more positive about the role played by transfer payments in various forms to poor people. Across the world we see um, poor people with very limited knowledge and awareness of their rights and the services that are available to them. And this is quite striking. Um, how to change that is, 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 is less clear. Um, a lot of public information programs don't necessarily work well. Some do, some don't. Um, the idea that you just go to a village and announce a new program, um, that doesn't seem to work terribly well. I think you have to be more interventionist. You have to target those efforts to poor people who, particularly poor people, who, who are disconnected from the flow of knowledge, from the, uh, um, they're, they're, they're not empowered properly to take advantage of even the knowledge about how they would do better in their lives. An example of this comes from our, our work in Bihar in India. Um, we're very concerned about the lack of awareness amongst poor people of their rights under the law. They're, they're, they're what the law says they can and can't do, particularly under the National Rural Employment Guarantee Act in India, which is a, a very important piece of legislation that it gives them uh, access to employment when they need it. Um, and we were struck, and we did a, a quiz. We, we, we found poor people in Bihar were very well unaware of their rights. They knew about this scheme, but they didn't know anything much about the details. So we tried to actually change that by making a movie, a, a, an educating movie that tried to teach them their rights under the law. It was um, well made. It had a, everything in the plot. We had love interest in the plot. We had everything you could do to try to engage their interest in the process of teaching them their rights under the, the legislation. We found that this could work to increase their knowledge. It worked very, quite effectively. But it's interesting, very interesting, amongst poor people it worked by them seeing the movie. Amongst non-poor people in villages, it worked by both seeing the movie and talking to people. Poor people, particularly illiterate, landless, lower caste people, were less connected with the channels of information flow within the village. Part of the reason they're poor is that they're less connected in this way. They're more socially excluded. And you've got to realize that. It's not, not, new knowledge won't necessarily trickle down. Just coming to the village with this, a new piece of knowledge about a public program and putting on a notice board or, or announcing it in a meeting will, not, will often not be enough.